At some point in time, you're going to have to work on systems under low ambient conditions. In other words, the outdoor temperature has dropped really low. This is going to be very common during commercial refrigeration. You have a walk-in cooler that's at 40 degrees and your outdoor temperature is say at zero degrees Fahrenheit and you still have to do work on that system. Well, as the temperature outside drops, so does the pressure inside of your tank and refrigerant. As the tank of the refrigerant pressure drops, it drops so low that you can't get the refrigerant out of the tank to go into the system because this pressure is either the same or lower than your suction pressure. So that's going to be an issue. So what we have to do is come up with a way to raise the temperature of the tank. And there's several ways of doing this. My favorite way is using a tank heater. And this is really just simply a heating blanket, in other words. And what I do is I just take my tank heater and I wrap it around low on my tank where I know there's going to be liquid refrigerant. And I Velcro it nice and tight and you see that there's a cord left. I can now plug this in and this starts heating up my tank. And as I heat my tank up, the temperature goes up, therefore the pressure goes up. Now as I'm charging my system, I have enough pressure in the tank to force that liquid refrigerant out of the tank and start throttling it into the system. But these tank heaters are expensive, so there is another option. You can take a bucket and fill it up with hot water. Then you can take your refrigerant tank, put it inside that hot water, and it evenly heats up the tank. As the tank temperature evenly heats up, the pressure in the tank heats up, and now you can get the refrigerant into the system. Now with a blended refrigerant, you still have to put it upside down, so sometimes it's a little bit tricky getting the hose to fit inside of that tank, but it's completely doable. This is a great safe method. Now both of these methods, using a tank heater or using a bucket with hot water in it, both are safe, good methods to getting the refrigerant out of the tank into that system. They raise the temperature and raise the pressure of the tank. However, there's some other methods. You'll see some people using a heat gun and a heat gun can be okay, but you wanna make sure that you're evenly heating the tank up. So you're getting the heat gun and you're moving it around very frequently so that your heat is distributing around that tank equally. You don't wanna just put that heat gun on the tank because what you're doing is heating one side of that tank a lot faster than the rest of it. So the metal in that tank starts to expand a lot faster and it can fatigue or damage the metal in that tank. So it's best if you're gonna use a heat gun to keep that heat gun moving around. Now the last option is the one you definitely want to avoid and that's using a torch. Yes, using a torch. I've seen technicians before use a torch, but using a torch is very dangerous. By putting that torch on here, it heats that metal in one spot very quickly because a torch the whole idea is to focus the heat in one area. So by having the torch on that tank, you can definitely cause that metal to be fatigued. Well, I haven't heard of anybody immediately blowing up their tank by doing that. It is a risk factor. So I wanna stay away from that risk factor, especially if you already have a crack from you've been dropping it and then you heat that up too fast, it could possibly rupture, as well as you have that little rupture disc right there. So that's one thing I like to stay away from using a torch, simply a bucket with hot water, a tank heater, last case scenario, a heat gun works really well, but just try to avoid using a torch. But that's all we can do. We can heat the tank up so the temperature of the tank goes up, pressure of the tank goes up, and we can now charge under low ambient conditions.